CDM Electronics presents training on Times Microwave Products, Part 1 of 4. The big, big part of the military business is our medically sealed airborne EW. EW is electronic warfare cable assemblies. And these are used on military aircraft for all of the real high-end uh, uh, microwave systems. So they'd be for like radar jammers, radar warning receivers, the targeting systems, the navigation systems, the weather radars, you name it. So uh, these are very high-end cables. And hermetically sealed means nothing can get in or out of the cable. Uh, after we put the connectors on, we actually do a test on there where uh, when we make the cable, we put a little bit of helium inside the cable and we put the completed cable assembly into a vacuum chamber and uh, pull vacuum on the cable. And if we detect any of the helium coming out of the cable, then you know we know it's not sealed and it's got to be you know remade. Um, so they're, they're very expensive cables. I mean, typically a cable assembly on the military side, you're, you're talking about five hundred dollars for a you know three or four foot cable assembly. You know, up to maybe a couple of thousand dollars for for a cable assembly. They're, not the kind of down and dirty cables that we make, like, not like that our distributors make with whoever on the LMR side. And uh, there's also a commercial avionics component to that too, although it's much smaller than the military side. That, that plane there, the second one down, is the P8 Poseidon. And this is replacing that old you know, P3 Orion aircraft. And uh, you know, this is the one that uh, you know, flies. Uh, it's, it's like a, you know, basically a big uh, you know, electronic warfare um, aircraft for, uh, you know, listening, surveillance. Uh, it goes after submarines. Uh, you know, it's, it's MMA means multi-mission aircraft. And the plane looks like a 737 because it basically is a 737 aircraft that's been modified to turn it into a military aircraft. But uh, we have all the uh, cables on that also. So we have that whole thing, the whole P-8 program too. And uh, just one other thing, we have a new phase track cable uh, that's you know very very stable, very low loss for phase critical applications. And you guys have sold some phase track cables, I think, down into Argentina for something, right? Yeah. Program down there. Okay. And uh, the, the key thing on uh, phase stability, you know, most of the time when you're talking about people about cables being phase stable, they ask, ask you if they're phase stable. They're talking about if you bend it, does the phase change. So that's, a, you know, one concern. It's more the common concern. But the uh, higher end cables that they're looking for are cables that are phase stable with temperature. Because as the temperature changes, the phase will change on the cable. And as luck would have it, when you're talking about a Teflon cable, that phase change is right around room temperature. So it's, it's constantly changing at room temperature. So it's jumping all over the place. So if you have an application for a phase stable cable and you need to use a Teflon cable, um, you, you got a big problem on your hands. So we developed a new material you know, with DuPont that stays phase stable with temperature, and that's what that is. And uh, just mo moving on to the commercial side, uh, you know, we got into the LMR business about 17 years ago, started out with just a real standard cable, you know, the basic LMR. And then that started morphing over into a lot of other cables, you know, the DB, Fire Retardant, Ultraflex, Plenum. <coughs> Uh, if you, you know, look in our catalog or the price list, you, you see it's a pretty, pretty big menu of you know, different cable types. And we'll, we'll go, uh, just kind of going down the list of the different types of customers that we, we sell to. And th this isn't necessarily a, a complete list, but it's probably a good list of most of where our products go. And the reason I say it's not complete is you know, we get our point of sale reports from the distributors every month, and I'll go down that, and I'll see some irrigation company on there or public golf course, you know, they're using GPS out on the golf course, or the irrigation company is using, uh, you know, a SCADA system, you know, supervisory control and data, you know, system to run their irrigation systems just remotely. Uh, there's just more and more opportunities and applications for wireless remote systems all, all the time. Just going down the list, pl private land mobile, two-way radio, you know, these are, uh, you know, people who just use, you know, a private system. So if you, if you think about a company like Sears, for example, the guy's out on the road, you know, he's the uh, service guy, you know, he's making, you know, calls to go fix somebody's dishwasher or whatever, and he's got to communicate back with the, you know, the Sears dispatcher and whatnot. You know, this is a private application for land mobile radio. So somewhere they have to have a repeater site. Uh, they have to have an antenna up on top of the tower, you know, down to uh, you know base station, and that's how the whole system works. 
So if you flop that over into public safety, now you're talking about the police guys, the fire, EMT, first responders. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of public safety uh, applications there because you've got your, your, your local, you know, like right here down in Turnersville, you've got a police department, whatever. You've got the, the state police in Connecticut. Uh, you know, you've got, uh, you know, just, you know, t t tons and tons of, you know, fire, police, safety people all over, you know, all over the state. Uh, in the energy area, gas and oil, you know, our, our business in, in, in this area kind of goes up and down depending on the price of oil. You know, I mean, it's almost obvious, but when, when the price of energy is very high, people want to go exploring, uh, you know, there's new opportunities, uh, you know, they're opening up sites that maybe were dormant or, you know, they couldn't afford to go into, into when oil was like, you know, $40 a barrel, but when oil gets to be $100 a barrel, oh, we can go in there and start drilling again. And what they do on, uh, you know, these sites is they use the remote control to, uh, you know, run the oil rigs or, you know, even for, for like exploration. I mean, it's not like in the old days when you watch an old movie and there's a guy standing there next to this old, you know, oil derrick, you know, and there's like half a dozen guys around. There's nobody around these sites. They're all remote control. That's, that's the way they're operating. So that's a big market. And actually, week after next is a show down in Houston. Um, you know, I don't know if... Um, uh, you guy down there uh, in, uh, in Dallas. We showed, uh, you know, this week right now, UTC in, um, in Long Beach. And uh, when you think of the utility companies, it's, it's the power companies and the water companies. It's basically those two groups. And in the, in the power uh, utility area, you've got your, your big power utilities. Like, who do you have here? I don't know who you guys use for power. Is public? Who's, who's New Jersey? Who is it? Atlantic City Electric. Atlantic City Electric, okay. Uh, but there's some, you know, big uh, guys, like if you, you know, down uh, in Texas, you got AEP, right? And down in Georgia, uh, in that area of the southeast, you have a, a, a southern company, I guess. But there's a lot of uh, second-tier utility companies also. It's like little regional guys, like up in Connecticut. Like we have Connecticut Light and Power. And uh, I forget who the other guy is, but right in Wallingford, where our company is, they got their own power company. So there's, you know, all of these little, you know, guys like they're we call them like second and third tier utility companies too. So uh, you're talking you know, about power supply companies, right? Like for your home and stuff. Exactly. Texas yeah. has like over a hundred of them. Electric companies, yeah. It's not yeah. like here where you guys have one choice; we have a hundred choices. Yeah. When you get out into the Midwest and down in Texas, <clears throat> that's right. There's a lot of these. Uh, like regional utility companies. Yeah, they're power utility companies, like utilities, water companies, okay? So, and then, then you get into, uh, and, and, a, and a lot of what we're talking about so far, you know, if we're looking at the types of products that go into those uh, customers, you're, you're, you're really talking about applications here that are at lower frequencies from about 20 megahertz up to, you know, maybe 900 you know, megahertz, that type of thing, because a lot of it's just like two-way, you know, when you get into the, uh, we'll talk about the SCADA stuff, uh, you know, down a little bit more. But, um, you know, it's really like LMR 400 and, you know, 600, that type of thing, those products. You know, then you've got local, municipal, state, federal agencies, uh, uh, you know, right on down the line. So you, you, you're talking here about uh, the Department of Transportation, you know, those kinds of places around the, the state. Uh, you've got prisons, you know, and they're called them prisons, and, you know, down like North Carolina, people in charge of the prisons in the state. You know, they all have to be concerned about communications. Um, then you get, you know, military defense. You guys are you know, kind of familiar with military and defense. But there's, actually, there's a lot of LMR cable used on the military and the defense side for uh, uh, military bases. So, uh, you know, we're not talking about aircraft applications here when we're talking about military defense for the commercial products. Um, satellite services, uh, you know, wireless internet service providers, you know, that was huge for us a few years ago. And then, uh, you know, then there's the, the, the carrier market. And uh, we're, we're not big in the carrier market when you're looking at the tower feeders. Like, you know, you drive down the road, you see, you know, the big tower with, you know, six, uh, five or six arrays of antennas on them. And you see those cables going up. Those aren't LMR cables. <laughs> they're not using LMR for that. But uh, they're using LMR in applications like for uh, in-building, you know, very, very big for in-building use, uh, rooftops, uh, pole tops, any what I would call like a non-traditional installation for a carrier like an AT&T, you know, T-Mobile, Verizon, any of those guys. Um, 
I mean, there's reasons they don't use the LMR on the towers, but when you get into like a building application in building, it's, it's like the perfect solution for them. So if I went and called an AT&T down in Georgia and uh, you know, I tried to get LMR approved by them, they're like, oh, we can't use LMR, not use an LMR kit. I'll go down that point of sale report every month, you know, AT&T here, AT&T, they're, they're using it all over the place. Because the guys who are responsible for making things work out in the regions, they know if they try to install like corrugated cable in a building, they're gonna they're gonna have a lot of trouble. But they can put LMR cable in, hook everything up, and it's and it's gonna work. There, there's reasons why it wouldn't be good for outdoor, but it is good for you know, indoor applications. Okay. So uh, a lot of in building, and we specifically do a show again, just flipping back to shows, uh, the Bixie shows, and I think you. We were talking about the Bixie. You did go to one of the Bixie shows, okay? That's an in-building uh, show. It's not specifically for um, you know RF and wireless coverage in buildings, but it, it's a it's a cabling show for all of the kinds of cables that are used inside of a building that are not electrical cables. So it's the uh, you know twisted pair for all the computers. It's the uh, you know fire alarm cables. You know anything that's not electrical, anything that's electronic and down it, it, it covers. And they run two shows a year, and uh, they're you know, good, good shows for us. We get a lot of stuff specced in just because we go to that show. For more information about CDM Electronics products and services, email our sales department at sales at cdmelectronics.com or call toll free 877-386-8200.